week on Black Prayer Meeting Shooting. We're in Springfield, Massachusetts, home of the Springfield Armory. When I was doing a little research, I had to come and check this place out because they apparently have a lot of cool looking smoke poles and other firearms in here on display. So cannot wait to get in here and see what's here and I'm gonna take you along for the action. The year is 1794. The new federal government decides to manufacture its own muskets so that the nation would not be dependent on foreign arms. President George Washington selects Springfield as a site of one of two federal armories. The second national armory is built in Harpers Ferry, Virginia. During the year of our Lord 1795, the Springfield Armory begins weapon production. So let's get in this room and check out some of those cool looking early smoke poles. Up first, about flintlock musket built in 1795. This one is 69 caliber. Percussion rifle, 1855, a 58 caliber. And the one below it is a percussion rifle of 1861, which is also a 58 caliber. When the armory began production of the M1795 musket, it took 14 man hours to produce one gun stock. By the time of the Civil War, machines could turn out 14 gun stocks an hour. In the year of our Lord 1819, armory employee Thomas Blanchard develops a special lathe for the consistent mass production of rifle stocks. Now the cool thing about this is, here is a small replica of one that actually works to show you how it cranked out the stocks. Pretty cool invention for its time. Forging is the process of heating metals and hammering them into a desired shape. It is a technique used by the blacksmith and indeed the early gun makers used many of the blacksmith's tools in their trade. Here are a few of the smaller items required to put together a firearm. Notice how they are just hammered and filed into precision. Penetration test. <laughs> Some of the things that I like to penetrate today with black butter firearms are pop cans full of pop, magazines, glass, and all kinds of other strange objects. Well, they performed the same thing back in the 1850s. Check out this piece of wood with the bullet still in it. Now, that is very cool. Now 
This is a very cool gun called the life-saving gun. If a ship run aground in heavy seas that can actually be lost within the site of safety. This particular gun was built by David A. Lyle and it would shoot a long projectile with a rope tied to it over the sinking ship. They could actually put buoys on it or tie it to another ship and rescue the passengers. Now that is real neat. Handguns. Yes, they were made here too. Just check out this big awesome wheel lock. Talking about a very sweet looking matchlock. Well, here's one. Wow. Ever see a wheel lock? Well, they have a fine example of one in the Springfield Armory Museum. Fowlers were a very popular gun back in the day, and they have a fine looking example of one of those here. Being as I'm just a loose powder round ball type shooter, but there are shooters out there that really enjoy the breech loading percussion paper cartridge guns. Lots of testing of those in the middle 1800s, and here are a few on display. For you trapdoor shooters out there, the Springfield Armory has lots of them on display. Check some of these out. Pull you can ever think of in this place. Confederate weapons, flintlock rifles, matchlocks, wheel locks. Got them all around me here. Carbines behind me. Confederate weapons. I know the glare is off of bad. I wish I could correct that. Confederate weapons. Civil War infantrymen, just as soldiers of all wars, often ignored regulations and decorated or modified their equipment to reflect their taste. While the quality of the ornamentation varies, each is unique and interesting as a reflection of the life of the soldiers. I think you're going to really enjoy seeing some of these.
saving the most unusual and fascinating guns at the end, here are a few mishaps displayed at the museum. The first one is the sentry walking on his patrol on a rainy night had his musket and bayonet turned into a corkscrew by lightning. A regulation Civil War paper cartridge was found intact in the breach when a weapon was disassembled for cataloging and preservation in 1981. The barrel of this weapon found on a Civil War battlefield has been struck by a large projectile. During the Civil War, the stock of this British infield became impregnated with salt from perspiration. After the war, the soldier took the gun home and stored it in his barn. The gnawed stock is the result of a porcupine attempting to chew out the salt. These weapons were struck by projectiles during combat. In several instances, the bullets can be seen still embedded in the barrels. And I'm not even going past the Civil War to the current times. Because back over in that corner are M1s, machine guns, World War I guns, German guns from World War II and World War I, all kinds of more modern equipment. But after all, this is a black better channel. you got to stop somewhere. That's a lot of smoke bullets. <laughs> the grounds here at Springfield Armory are just simply beautiful. Lots of old buildings around here look like for cadets training and so forth, the military actions. Thanks for watching. And remember, Jesus does love you. We'll catch you on the next adventure.